All right, hello there. Welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor for episode 105. Thanks very much for taking the time to join me on this episode. Got a few stories we're going to talk about today. Um, and so let me get right into it. Now, first story is, you know, guys and gals that I like to cover stuff from around the world. So this is actually for India. And they're actually building their first lithium ion battery manufacturing plant. It's going to be set up in Karnataka, if I've got that correct. Um, from a Mumbai-based company called Epsilon Carbon. And they want to produce the graphite anode materials for lithium-ion batteries, which is great. It would be their first factory of this type. They plan on producing up to 50,000 tons per year by 2025. So again, depending on what COVID does and how things operate, they're starting off with 5,000 tons and then in for next year, and then they'll triple to 15,000 to get to 50,000 by five years. Um, excellent to see. Be great for the economy, of course, for India to add more jobs. Now, India is pushing a pretty aggressive electric vehicle policy, as you've seen me report on some vehicles and things going on there as well. So manufacturing will really help India become less sufficient on other countries and more self-sufficient in some of the materials for electric vehicles, which is great. 80% um, of course of the global demand happening right now for graphite anodes is supplied by China. So I'm sure that this will be a pattern we'll see in more and more countries adopt as they try to loosen their reliance on China and become more self-sufficient. And here's another story about Tesla that it's no secret that Elon wants to of course continue his sustainable transportation messaging to more of the masses. I think realizing that the Model 3 is a great vehicle, but it still doesn't get that price point down to where we need to get it for the masses. So, you know, Elon had, had said on an investor call prior that um, they won't succeed in their mission if they don't make cars more affordable, which is something, if you've watched my the first show, even going back with Trevor, I've been harping on affordability, folks. So it's nothing that I'm not aware of that really needs to be done, and I'm glad Elon recognizes that. And he says that the things that bugs me the most about where we are is that car aren't affordable enough. We haven't hit cost parity, of course, as you know, and all that kind of stuff, and we need to fix it, he says. So not he's not revealing specifics, but it sounds like Tesla is going to look at a more cost-favorable all-electric vehicle, a vehicle at some point, a compact vehicle, uh, maybe a hatchback, who knows? There's all kinds of renderings as you're seeing and stuff floating around, and the rapid rumor reel mill is going crazy. Again, folks, take all this stuff with a grain of salt, okay? Until you see something concrete, it's just speculation, it's just rumors. I'm just reporting that Elon does have a vision and he does want to take Tesla down to that affordability bracket to really give much more of a mass market. Now, Germany could be the place where he starts that because, of course, smaller compact vehicles, hatchbacks are all the rage. They're very popular in the European <clears throat> and Canadian marketplaces, I should add. But we're a small market here, folks. Europe's a big one. So maybe by the time the German factory is up and running in July, you know, by next year, it could be the catalyst for smaller, cheaper models. I mean, they've got, you know, the truck to get out. They've got the roadster to get going. They've got to ramp up all the other production as they go crazy with orders. Just look at their stock, right? What's going on? So, um, but what what this plant could do for them that sets them apart is that it is um, it does provide a revolution in automotive body engineering. It has a giant aluminum casting machine, and that's the first. Uh, it looks like that's the first type of machine that is for the mass production industry. And uh, Tesla applied for the patent last year for that, and it really simplifies the process of assembling a unibody frame, which is traditionally done by folding, welding, and gluing together multiple panels of parts. And if you've watched those videos of Model 3 assembly line, and Model S, and Model Y, you see, you know, they're stamping the parts. The parts go down, humans move them around, or robots. Then they put them on the, the frame, and the robots weld them, and there's glue. There's a combination of things involved to put it all together. Well, if you can do that in one shot, that saves a lot of time and potentially saves a lot of cost. So that could be the silver bullet to get into Tesla affordability, really into the mass market. Like when I say mass market, I'm talking 25000 or less. It's got to be there. Not 35000 or more. It's got to be 25000 or less. It's a big difference in a lot of incomes for people. And I'm talking globally, not just North America, Canada, whatever. So really happy that Elon's recognizing that. So stay tuned and uh, we'll keep our eyes open for something. Now, in the same stretch, not really a rumor, but certainly there's not a lot of concrete evidence yet. 
yet, but it is coming. I am confident in that. Jaguar is also talking about a more affordable vehicle. They want to, of course, continue with their all elect electrification strategy. As they've said, they're going to build a lot more. They're going to convert a lot more of their fleet to electrification. Of course, the I-PACE is doing very well by their standards. So what they want to do, and again, it was their first ground up vehicle. They want to continue with that. They're doing the all new XJ sedan, which is going to be a, a higher price probably than the I-PACE or in the same ballpark. Uh, and that'll come out in 2021. But then they want to do a, a larger EV, SUV. Hey, no surprise. <laughs> they want to start electrifying SUVs. Boy, that's where the money is for sure. Uh, looks like uh, the rumor there is it's called the J-Pace. We'll have to wait and see. But then according to Auto Express, which I believe is a European um, uh, YouTube channel and a magazine uh, media channel a source, they say once the J-Pace, J-Pace J debut is that Jaguar is going to launch a smaller electric sedan and we don't have the name yet or any visuals now there's some renderings that I'm showing and this kind of stuff but again nothing's been officially released but you know they want to aim this at the Model 3 marketplace they want to aim it at that smaller four-door sedan marketplace bring the price down to affordability so it could be built it, it probably will be built on their modular longitudinal architecture the MLA platform say that 10 times fast sober and it will sit a bit higher off the ground than conventional. It'll probably be more like a pole star from a from a, a height and a stance perspective than the Model 3, which is a little lower, but who knows, it could be anything. So I'm just happy that Jaguar is doing this. Now I do know for sure that this is in the works. You can you can quote me on that, folks. I have a really reliable source. It's in the works. I don't have any details. I don't know when, but it is something that's happening. So this story, I truly believe, will happen. And uh, let's continue to watch and see what comes out. Another company I've been following for a few years, ever since actually 2016 time frame, so four years now, a company called Electromechanica. They're actually a Chinese-based company, but they were opening up a, a North American operations for building a single-seat, three-wheel electric vehicle called the Solo. Well, um, they're finally, finally moving into production after a couple of uh, start and stops, unfortunately for them. Looks like, um, you know, they were hoping to get cars out in 2017, 2018. Here we are, 2020, and they're just starting in the late part of the year. But anyway, better late than never, I say. Now, these are being produced in China, as I mentioned, because the parent company is there, a big machine. And they've been, this company goes back to a lot of other um, vehicles and uh, machines and things like that. So they have a history in manufacturing uh, in the electric space as well. Now there's no firm numbers of how many of these solars are going to be produced. There's some you know, rumors floating around around 75,000 but no concrete numbers. We'll have to see how many reservations they have. Uh, they're all designated for the North American market to start. Um, again Electromechanica is based in Canada for the North American sales out in Vancouver actually. And they say that the sales of this uh, three-wheeled, it's a one-seater gain, uh, will start going out to Southern California, Scottsdale, Arizona, and Portland, Oregon areas. Those are the three big markets that they've got their initial orders for, so definitely in the U.S., um, again, it's a purpose-built, it's an urban-ish vehicle. You know, it looks, some people say it looks like half a car, kind of does, but, you know, it's there for a reason. Single-seater to get you to do some running around tasks in all electrics, cheap to operate, cheaper to buy, you know, around the $20,000 mark, if I remember, something like that. So, you know, probably cheaper with some incentives. So not bad, 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, maximum speed of 80 miles an hour, 109 kilometers per hour, single charge range of about 160 kilometers, 100 miles or so on an 82 horsepower electric motor. That's really all you need, really, to get something around town. Um, they also had uh, launched a rendering of their Tofino Roadster, which I reported on way back when, uh, I guess in 2017, 2018, 2017 time frame. That looked pretty cool. Two-seater ragtop, that looked all right. So that would, you know, that's more in line with maybe the North American traditional market. But uh, we'll have to see. They're targeting late November, December. If anybody out there has one on order and they get one, I'd love, love, love for you to email me. Maybe you can do a quick video and send it to me. I'll put it on in the mailbag segment so people can uh, see what you think about it. But congrats for Electromechanica for finally getting going. Final story today is a story that warms my heart. I do, as you folks know, like to report on mass transit EV adoption. And this is from Panama, uh, the country of Panama. They actually had a big order um, for buses uh, somewhere in the area of almost 200 buses that they were going to order diesel ones. And they, they, what they did is they did a free trial. BYD offered them some buses, a couple different models, different sizes to play with for about a year. They gave them some temporary infrastructure to support it and some training and all that stuff. And that's what they did. They uh, did a proof of concept for this over the last year. Now, Panama is 
one of the uh, nations that is part of the Paris Accords that was uh, and the carbon reduction pledges that were made in 2015. So they do have plans uh, as, as a country to do what they can to help uh, lowering carbon emissions. And it, that plan is called the National Electric Mobility Strategy. And I'm glad that Panama has that. And again, it's prioritizing low carbon solutions um, to transportation, especially within the country. And they really want to increase the number of electric buses as much as 35% by 2030. There's a lot of buses in Panama, a lot of buses in Mexico and all, a lot of the countries down all the way to the south. Mass transit is very popular. So 35% is a big number. So they, as I mentioned, they've been playing around with the BYD uh, buses, um, and their their main public transport system uh, provider is called MyBus. Uh, it's the Metrobus public transport system, and they've been, as I mentioned, two buses for free. So they've decided to cancel their order for the diesels and order almost 200 all-electric buses, which is fantastic. Now, at a cost of $35 million, so they don't get, do give some pricing. They're going to be used primarily in the main city, in Panama City itself, on some of their more popular routes and the distances that they can take. They found the value. So during this trial, they found the value of regenerative braking. The, 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 even the air, air conditioning was able to keep up with the, the, the tropical weather, of course, that they have there uh, all year round. So all that stuff was taken to an environment, the humidity, all that stuff, and the buses worked really, really well. So about 180000 on average per bus, and they worked out their ROIs and TCOs and all that stuff, and it was a very positive positive um, feedback. So they decided to pull the trigger and get these buses. So I'm really happy and congratulations, Panama, uh, the country of Panama, and of course, the, the city of Panama, the Panama City, that you'll be deploying these buses over the next couple of years. Uh, I think your ridership is going to be very appreciative because I've been to a few South American countries, as I've mentioned in some of the shows, and it's not pleasant to get stuck behind a bus that's spewing black diesel smoke right in your face because that's what happens in a lot of these places. So I'm really happy to see Panama do that. Congratulations. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, I'll have more coverage of stuff as things heat up. we got Tesla Battery Day coming, all kinds of stuff. Thank you, YouTubers, of course, for subscribing, for um, liking, for putting comments on there. It means a lot to me. If you haven't subscribed, please, please do. Thank you, of course, to Patreon supporters. You know who you are. If you want to be one, please check out the link, check out the website. Anything you want to do would help. Uh, if not, at least at least subscribe, which will, which will mean a lot to me. I'm going to continue with my PSA as things continue to evolve around the world. There's a lot going on, I know, folks. But please, follow public safety guidelines. Use your best judgment. Common sense, folks, okay? A lot of stuff going on. I'm in the middle of a... If you follow my Twitter, please follow me on Twitter. I just posted that I picked up a Honda Clarity that I'm going to start reviewing. I'm driving around this week. I've got two other cars scheduled for September as well that I'm going to be reviewing. So that's going to be exciting. I've got some more vehicles. And I got a special surprise coming up at the end of the month. So you'll have to stay tuned and wait for that. But uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to keep up with the EV revolution. And until next time, please everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.